Hello, Irvington Presbyterian Church. If you have a candle, you might light it now as I pray. Holy One, as we now bring fire to this candle wick, making it glow with light, may we also bring the fire of love to this time of worship and prayer. We pray that you will enlighten us. Amen. Psalm 100 will be for us a call to worship, words that turn our hearts toward God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us, and we belong to God. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter divine gates with thanksgiving and divine courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And God's faithfulness to all generations. I love the enchanted image of earth that is implicit here. Earth as a living being that makes a joyful noise to God not an object, but a perceptive entity infused with the energy and love of God and with whom we sing a joyful noise to God. Always before us is the wisdom that we are, in, we are an interconnected web of life created by God who loves us all. We forget this to our own detriment. Today's gospel is Matthew 9, 35 through 10, 23. I read from the translation called The Message. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, it reported kingdom news, and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. How few workers. On your knees and pray for harvest hands. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called twelve of his followers and sent them into the ripe fields. He gave them power to kick out the evil spirits, and to tenderly care for the bruised and hurt lives. This is the list of the twelve he sent. Simon, they called him Peter or Rock, Andrew, his brother, James, Zebedee's son, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the taxman, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, who later turned on Jesus. Jesus sent his twelve harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by traveling to some far-off place to convert unbelievers, and don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. Don't think you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment, and all you need to keep that going is three meals a day. Travel light. When you enter a town or village, don't insist on staying in a luxury inn. Get a modest place with some modest people and be content there until you leave. When you knock on a door, be courteous in your greeting. If they welcome you, be gentle in your conversation. If they don't welcome you, quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and be on your way. You can be sure that on Judgment Day they'll be mighty sorry, but it's no concern of yours now. Stay alert. This is hazardous work I'm assigning you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. 
So don't call attention to yourselves. Be as cunning as a snake, as gentle as a dove. Don't be naive. Some people will impugn your motives. Others will smear your reputation just because you believe in me. Don't be upset when they haul you before the civil authorities. Without knowing it, they've done you and me a favor, given you a platform for preaching the kingdom news. And don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. The right words will be there. The spirit of your father will supply the words. When people realize it is the living God you are presenting and not some idol that makes them feel good, they're going to turn on you, even people in your own family. There is a great irony here, proclaiming so much love, experiencing so much hate. But don't quit. Don't cave in. It is all well worth it in the end. It is not success you are after in such times, but survival. Be survivors. Before you've run out of options, the Son of Man will have arrived. A word of God for us. Thanks be to God. I'm grateful that I happened upon an essay about this passage that alluded to Etty Hillisum. A year ago, I had been reading and relishing a book, Etty Hillisum, An Interrupted Life and Letters from Westerbork, and it got packed into a box upstate, and I got distracted by other things. But when I find it again, I'm back to reading it, and I recommend it to you. She was a young woman who lived in Holland in the 1940s during German occupation, and she was not a conventionally religious person. But as she experienced the nightmare of Nazi German invasion, she had a growing sense of God's presence in her life that she journaled about in her diaries and in her letters. Before being shipped to the gas chamber of Auschwitz, while imprisoned in a transit camp, she wrote these words, There must be someone to live through it all and bear witness to the fact that God lived even in these times. And why should I not be that witness? Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, talks about Etty in one of his writings, and he describes her commitment this way. She decided to occupy a certain place in the world, a place where others could somehow connect with God through her. She took responsibility for making God credible in the world. She took responsibility for God's believability. She took responsibility for God's believability. If we understand our purpose, our calling as Christians, to be taking responsibility for God's believability in the world, would that change anything about us? How we operate, what we focus on as persons, individuals, as a church, how we, how we treat others, whether or not we get involved in social change. She took responsibility for God's believability. What would that look like for you in your life right now, in our world right now, if all of us who claim Christ and who believe in God through Christ, if we, if we lived in such a way as to prove the truth of what we believe about grace, forgiveness, healing, love, justice. Jesus' ministry was one of availability. He engaged, and story after story, we see him engaging with such a variety of persons, being present with another or with others, stepping out. He journeyed in order to meet people where they were. When he charged his disciples to do as he did, he authorized them to journey, quite literally to journey as they traveled about. But for us, perhaps the journey may be more metaphor, meaning to extend ourselves to meet people where they are and to love them gently. If the love isn't returned, well, okay. 
so be it. Just quietly move on and move out and continue to invite others in. Don't argue. Don't condemn or debate or rebuke or doom them to hell. Just gently turn attention to keep moving on, professing the faith, choosing to engage, choosing to bless people. Just keep bearing witness to the God who loves, who heals, who redeems, and who gathers us into an interwoven community of being and becoming, a bountiful, expansive community of praise. Keep taking responsibility for making this God believable. Give witness to this God and never give up. Jesus saw the people. He saw what they suffered and how they suffered, who they were, how hapless or lonely or hurting they were. He loved them. Maybe the best way we can bear witness to this God who sees us and loves us is to see others, not in order to change them, not to fix them, not to insist that they parrot back a formula of salvation that we learned along the way, but just to love them and to keep on making God whom we meet in Jesus believable in a world that is so antithetical to Jesus. Our world is angry and dominating and violent and dangerous and unjust and lacking compassion. But our God is not that. Our God is loving and gracious and gentle and kind and forgiving. And so when we live into that, we make that God believable in this world. In this way, perhaps we make God real for someone for whom God is simply a wishful thought or a funny idea. The living God is not an idea, but a presence. Sharing faith is not about sharing our ideas about God. Sharing faith is about introducing people to someone we know and we want them to know too. The longer I live, the more I understand that the Christian faith is not about what we know. It's about the one we know. And it's about sharing that relationship with others. Remember Eddie's witness to us. There must be someone to live through it all and bear witness to the fact that God lived even in these times. And why should I not be that witness? Life is short. We have not much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. Therefore, be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. Please pray with me. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or weep these long days and nights of pandemic and civil unrest, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Give your angels charge over those who witness to your grace by marching for justice, those who turn tragedy into opportunity to create a better world, by standing with those who are abused, by tending to truth-telling, by mending the world through faithful acts of mercy. Bless the sick, Lord Christ, Give rest to the weary, comfort the dying, soothe the suffering, and uphold the joyous within us all, even as we endure troubled times. And all for your love's sake. We thank you for the emerging vision of a just world. We thank you for the goodness that is evident in our world of woe. May your will be done in our land and in our world, in our in our homes, in our communities, and in this church. We pray in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to be divinely human. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you lit a candle earlier, you might want to extinguish it now, or you might want to take a moment and reflect for yourself on what today's gospel invites you to do, or to be, or to change. Be at peace, Irvington Presbyterian Church. Be at peace.